yo, what is going on Raiders the boss here and today we are going to be playing the survival arena once again on the map Thunderdome. As you've been asking on how to get about certain waves, I want to give you today a full walkthrough on that and additionally to that we'll have a look on how we can save a lot of time at the end of every arena. So I'm gonna show you as well today how you can finish the arena 1-2 to two minutes earlier than you would have normally done it in order to get a higher place which is in my case the third one in the global ranking. However I'm not gonna go through all the boss fights here as I've done that already in a full montage so if you're interested also in that video you can check it out later as well. So to start off I'm building here 2 cannons, not 3 so that we have 5 gears left over because we'll be playing here throughout the arena only with 3 towers. The bird side, the ice tower and the sky harpoons. So first thing you wanna do here is to build as fast as possible the first Bertha because they're way more effective through their splash damage than the cannons and they can kill the approaching waves therefore much faster. So there is also a trick with the ammunition right in the beginning which can save you some time. As you can see I'm not using my ammunition right in the beginning of each wave because the effects of it won't last through the whole wave. So I'm waiting for it to be almost over and then I drop my ammunition because then the last remaining troops who enter the area will instantly die and that can save you a little time but in the end every second you lose counts and each and every second can make a difference in the end when you sum it up. You'll recognize the moment when you need to drop the ammunition when you have a look at the red bar in the top left corner of the screen which shows you the process of each wave and when it's approximately half filled make use of one of the ammunitions either the snowball or the poison weapon. Obviously after wave 9 there comes the first boss of this arena and for that one we'll save up the cannonball to deal with him in a very fast manner only thing to make it work is to get a couple of upgrades within the power up menu in the beginning. So don't drop that cannonball before that because you want to save it up for the right moment. So when he comes wait a couple of seconds to let him enter the area of effect and then drop the cannon and you get rid of him by not wasting another second bothering with him. And from the sky shards earned we'll build the first sky harpoon and our first ice tower. Alright so when nothing spectacular or important happens during the waves I'll just skip to the next highlight. I assume that's more helpful than analyzing each and every wave individually which are not that important to be mentioned. Ok so those of you who have seen my first video have seen how I built my base here and I still believe that it's one of the best approaches to the map because I'm building the entrance for the approaching waves in the form of U and later I'll tell you why but for now we'll be concerning with wave 16. For that one we need to save up the snowball or poison weapon and to use it effectively drop it simply right in the beginning and this should be able to deal with those fast enemies. Very easy but later they get very hard so we need to be a bit more careful then. Afterwards in wave 17 we face those hammer guys and you should definitely make sure to have again one of the ammunition ready to shoot at them. Otherwise we lose already there some heart and we don't want that to happen at the moment cause we need some of them still for a special reason. So far so good and to continue with wave 20 we are now upgrading the ice tower to slow down big daddy to have more time to let our towers shoot on him. But what's now really important to survive the next approaching wave is to make sure to save up the ammunition as we are getting attacked by these fast running girls and like mentioned before if we are not careful when they come it's very easy to lose some hearts here and obviously it got very close at the end and one almost made it through our defense. So for the next wave we've upgraded Sky Harpoon with the gears earned from the boss of wave 20 and if you have done so you're safe for the next two waves but again we have no time to relax here because from wave 24 to 28 we'll be facing the first challenging rounds in which we have to perform well. So for wave 24 we're making use of the poison cannon to kill some of the approaching troops right in the beginning. However make sure that you only use one ammunition there as we need to follow a strict strategy in order to survive those waves without greater damage as we need the other ammunition in the following waves. Also to extend the path which the enemies have to go I built there some more berthas and another ice tower. It is really important that you try to cover every part of the path you are creating with the ice tower because for example if the bosses of this area attack where no ice tower can shoot on them obviously Troops will speed up there and consequently it'll be easier for them to reach the sky shot generator. Alright so wave 26 is approaching and for this one I wait until I can use another snowball and until the first enemy reaches the top left corner and as you can see I throw it onto two lanes so that all of the hammer guys are affected which makes it easy for my berthas to take them out. 
Afterwards wave 27 follows and I make use of the poison weapon right in the beginning as I want to take this dangerous wave out early. Then I'm using my cannonball on one of the biggest groups here to prevent them from passing through but unfortunately that one girl was able to survive which cost us one heart but still this won't harm us that much as we still got 19 more left. Then we are facing wave 28 but as you can see afterwards there will follow an air attack which allows us to definitely go hard on this wave without being concerned about the next wave as we won't need any ammunition for it. So we are good to skip to the next highlight of the Thunderdome. So after we have dealt with Donkey Fun Snot we'll start upgrading those bursts which are forming the U because now we are able to shoot on more than one lane formed by the towers and the sooner we upgrade them the earlier troops will die directly in the beginning which ultimately saves us a lot of time for the end. Now we are doing a big jump to wave 44 and there make sure to save up at least the poison ammunition for the next wave to get rid of those running girls once again. So first of all we we'll wait for a second until a lot of them are already on the map and then we'll use simply the poison weapon on them which should be able to take them out. You can also see that I've made it easily with those two sky harpoons up to this wave and invested everything so far into upgrading the berthas. Alright wave 46 is very easy and I recommend not to use any snowball or poison weapon on this because once again we'll need everything for the next one in order to defend ourselves properly. So even though this wave looks on first view very strong we can deal with it simply by using the cannonball. So sometimes it's better to hold the ammunition back so that we can have more defending power in the next wave. Generally though it's often better to use the ammunition a lot because it's helping to kill enemies faster but I assume in every arena there will be some waves in which the ammunition is a lot more important to use than in other ones. Ok here we are in wave 47 and to survive I wait again until the girls run far into my layout and then drop the snowball onto 3 different lanes and this is another factor why this base layout is effective for the thunderdome as we freeze a lot of enemies very easy which gives us the guarantee to perform well here and while there are still some enemies left we continue building our defense to make sure that none of the girls can slip through. Let's make another big jump to wave 70 because there is not a lot of interesting stuff happening in between except that I've continued building my defense with the sky harpoons and berthas and that I have lost a heart in an air attack. But for me if I'm having 6 sky harpoons on this map fully upgraded that's sufficient that I'm more interested in investing in berthas than in sky harpoons as there are more ground waves than air attacks. As far as I've heard people fail a lot on those waves we are gonna see now and I totally agree that this can be really hard and even I fail sometimes which can result in doing the whole thing again for the fact that I'm having not enough hearts left to perform well with my strategy here which I will show you in the end. In those waves have a close look at how I'm using my ammunition to survive as those are the key to success especially in the next waves. I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is so I'm gonna speed through that waves and have a look where I'm using my ammunition and so on. Unfortunately I haven't made it perfectly through all waves but overall I'm not focusing with the snowball on the closest enemy to the generator. I'm more interested to limit the damage I get there so don't start panicking if some troop is at the point of breaking through. It's better to see how damage can be reduced and that's often not happening when using ammunition on the first enemy. So overall I survived these waves with 13 hearts left and that's barely enough to do my special strategy here which is definitely going to enrich your future approaches to the Thunderdome. Ok are you ready to hear it? In wave 80 we are fighting against Chillout and normally he would take a lot of time to get killed but as you can see I am selling my ice towers which created some gaps in my defense and I also opened the gap right next to the entrance and one might think now ok he's gonna go straight for that sky shot generator and that's exactly my plan. But still he's very slow and I'm gonna make him angry by opening and closing the path with the cannon and through that he's speeding up and becomes very fast which is exactly what we need here because we won't fight against him at all. So we are doing here an exchange with hearts for time which I'm happy to do as this part is the key element to perform here well. However this strategy has the limitation that you have to make it up here with more than 10 hearts which can be sometimes quite hard. Alright always when you see those big guys approaching here they will come in a second. The best strategy to handle them is by using I'm calling it the grouping and shooting strategy. Seems like boss is getting creative here but either way this strategy goes like this. 
wait until some of these big guys reach the spot right next to the sky up to and then you throw your snowball onto them and wait until some more groups are getting stuck there. And as soon as this happens, we'll use all ammunitions on them and like you can see, health goes down very fast and that's also one of the reasons why I'm using that U shade because then a lot of Berthas can shoot simultaneously on that entrance area which helps to speed up killing enemies in the first place and through this we are saving here a lot of time and now time has come to show you how I'm fighting against the last boss of the Thunderdome. So we can still save up some time in wave 90 and we prepare for that by selling in wave 89 Berthas while we get rid of those pirates and with the gears we get out of there we start to buy the sky harpoons as we already know that the last boss is an air unit and I call this strategy selling and I don't know if you have an idea how I should call this strategy tell me in the comments. So the sky harpoons are doing a decent job taking care of donkey fun snot which lets him die fast and after he's down we're done with the thunderdome this time in 49 minutes and one life left which was pretty close in the end but still sufficient to make it through it alive very fast and we were able to claim the third place here. Of course this was my fast approach and not the safe way so here we are again at the end of this video and I hope you had a good time watching it and that you know now more about how you can approach the survival arena. Of course this is not the ultimate strategy to do it fast but for me it works that way and I just thought it would be great to share it with you. If you want to see my montage about the Thunderdome including all boss fights simply click now on the video. This is it from me, have a great raid, peace out.